no data sets, no training, only a few lines of code. Now we have this new YOLO world model for open vocabulary update detection. So now we don't need anything. We don't have to label our data. We don't have to go in and actually like fine tune an update detection model before we can deploy that. But now we can use this YOLO world model. We can specify what types of classes and labels we want to detect, or we can just leave it blank and it's just going to detect whatever it can in the image. So we're going to cover that in this video. We're going to go through the GitHub repository. Let's go in and see what it can do, some benchmarking. And then we're going to see how we can run it in code and also some crazy good results at the end. So let's just jump straight into the project page. We can see here YOLO world, real time open vocabulary, optic detection, because we don't need any labels anymore. And the cool thing here is that this model acts like runs in real time. It is built on top of the YOLO V8 architecture from Ultralytics. So this is able to run in real time. It only takes like a few milliseconds to process the images. So now we have this open vocabulary running real time. You can have your webcam, move it around. You can have videos, throw everything as we're doing with the YOLO V8 models for everything to the model. And it's going to give you the results, detect arbitrary objects in the scene. You don't have to label data. You can just tell it to detect bottles as we're going to see later in this video. So here we can basically just go through it. First of all, to have a demo on Hawk and Face as well. We can just go in and take a look at that one. So it should be running here on a T4. Then we can enter the different classes to be detected, separate by comma. This is just the 80 Coco dataset classes. So you can use those as default. And this is basically just for pre trained models, but you can also specify whatever you want yourself. So let's just go in and drag and drop an image. Here we just have a bunch of bottles. We're going to run this video through uh, a bit later. Let's just do it here with the default prompts and let's just hit submit and see if we are able to process the image. So we'll just take a couple of seconds to act like load out the model, do the inference, and now we can see the results here. So we get a sync here, probably a bit of low confidence score, but we're actually able to detect all of these bottles here in the frame. So yeah, it misses detection, like it doesn't get the bottles here in the back because again, it is really hard to see, but all the bottles, which is act like really clear in the foreground, it gets all of them. This model has not been trained on anything. Right now we're just specifying all of these classes. We can also just like, if we don't want to have the sync here, we can also just specify bottle, hit submit again. Let's do the inference. It's going to process it and let's now see if we're only detecting the bottles. And that is the case here. So now the sync is removed and we're now only processing bottles. So you can just go into this hawk and face space and just play around with it, drop in some images here and also play around with the prompts. We can also deploy and export the ONNX model directly. You'll get a download link. We can specify the maximum number of bucks that we want to detect, score threshold for a confidence score, and also our non-maximum suppression. So if we just hit ex deploy and export the ONNX model, it's actually going to take this specific class together with the YOLO world model, which is built on top of YOLO V8. And then it's basically just going to export that model together with your labels. So now we have an object detection model. We don't have any data. We have not labeled our data. We have not trained any models. We just use this out of the box. We specified a prompt and it's running in real time. So here you can see YOLO V large on an X. We can download it and use it in our own applications and projects. So just go back here again. Now we have the demo. We can read about like the abstract. They also have this paper that you can go through where we basically just have this training online vocabulary. So the main idea behind an open vocabulary is that we don't have like specific labels. We just want to like have an open vocabulary and we're just going to do like zero shot and train on tons of different classes and objects. So for the deployment, we actually need to have a user specifying what type of prompts and so on, or like what type of classes and objects that we want to detect. So we take our user vocabulary, throw it into a text encoder. It's going to use clip in this example here. And then we have a man and a woman are skiing with a dog. And then it's basically just going to extract this from the online vocabulary in the training phase, throw it into the text encoder, and then also use the user inputs. Then we have these vocabulary embeddings. It's going to be combined with the YOLO V8 backbone. So it's using YOLO V8 as the backbone, it combines it, and then it's going to throw out the results here at the end. So you can go through the paper here if you want to dive more into details, but here we're just going to go over the benchmarks, the highlights, and then let's see the cool results, and let's see how we can run it in code, and also how fast it runs. So we can see the framework, highlights and so on. We can see here that it's clip-based text encoder, as I just mentioned before. Next generation of YOLO detectors. So here are all the data sets that it has been pre-trained on. So these are large-scale vision language data sets. World empowers YOLO world with strong zero shot open vocabulary capability and grouting ability, which is basically just that we can detect objects that we have not trained on before. And again, fast inference speed. So this runs just as fast as the YOLO V8 models. If you go down and take a look at performance, they're comparing like glib method, uh, grounding Dino and so on, which were actually like used before. 
and it is using like this swin transformer as the backbone but now we can use these convolutional backbones from yolv8 to get significantly higher processing speed so before if you're using clip or grounding dino you can see you got one two frames per second on an nvidia v100 so that's a very high-end gpu and also the average positions and also average precision recall here it is significantly lower compared to what we have now and you can just see the fps here for the yolo world models again we have a small medium large variations so this is pretty cool we can get up to 50 60 75 frames per second i'm actually running this as well and you're going to see that we get way better performance and also better inference speed compared to these ones. So we have good precision, we have good inference speed. This is pretty crazy. We don't have to do anything now. We can also see a speed and accuracy curve here where we can just see like how significantly better it is compared to the other ones up to 20x speed up. Here just have a bunch of visualizations going over a number of examples. You can go more into details with that. But right now, let's just jump straight into it and let's see how we can actually like run it. So if you go inside the Autolytics documentation, they have already implemented this YOLO world model and basically just having a pull request that they have merged together. So now we can see we have this YOLO world model. You get a short description as we just went over. You get the key features and so on. But here you can see how we can extract the weights. So here you can see how we can actually use it in the command prompt. So we just have YOLO predict. We specify the model and also the path to the source. So that could be like a NumPy array, YouTube video, webcam stream, video path etc so you can throw all of that into the source and it's going to do the predictions straight away you can also specify save equal to true and also uh, show equal to true we can set the different prompts here beforehand so right now we need to set the classes of so person boss if you're only interested in those two classes but we're going to see that in just a second so this is how easy it is to run no data set as i mentioned no training only a few lines of code we can actually get away with it with only two lines of code after we've imported yolo from ultralytics so let's just jump straight into this python script here i have a bunch of videos we can run through test it out with no prompts with like with no classes that we're specifying and also specify a couple of classes so first of all from autolytics we're going to import yolo then we have cv2 and we're also going to import supervision from roboflow ssv because we're going to use that to annotate our frames and we will jump into the github repository and also the documentation in just a second so you guys can see how easy it is to extract the results from autolytics and then visualize them with supervision after we've done that we can set up the model so we just need to specify yolo 8 medium as we do in all the other videos where we're using Ultralytics models. And now we just have to specify world. You can also change this out with segmentation. If you want to run segmentation, don't specify anything for object detection. Can also be OVB for oriented bounding boxes, pose, and also classes. So this is how easy it is to use the YOLO8 models from Ultralytics. But right now we're going to use the world model. We we'll start with just a bottle example. So I just have a video where these bottles are actually like running um, in production. Then we're going to set up our SV bounding box annotator. So this is how we can extract the results from Autolytics, throw them into Supervision, so bounding box annotator. And we're also going to set up a label annotator so we can visualize our actual labels on top of our bounding boxes. Now we need to specify the path to our video capture, and then it's just going to open up that video. Could also just be a webcam stream and so on. And we're going to set up a video writer, so restore the results in a video file. Then we're going to have a while loop as always we're going to have cap this is opened we read an image from our webcam throw that image directly through a model model.predict we throw in the image and we get the results out then we can take the results sv.detections we can create a new detections um, instance of this detection class and then we call the method from autolytics we specify the result take the zero of the index of that and then we now have our detections that we can then use for drawing our bounding boxes and also our label annotator. So this is how we can use it from Roboflow and also from Supervision. So let's just jump in and take a look at this Supervision GitHub repository from Roboflow because it's a really cool tool that you should, guys should definitely know of when you're playing around with computer vision models, object detection models and so on because you can just take the results from a number of different frameworks a number of different models and then you can visualize and do some cool visualizations directly they have a bunch of examples in here that you can go over the only thing that you need to do is pip install supervision and then we can set up the models as we have now with the yolo model we extract the detections from ultralytics and then we can go down and create our annotator which is the exact same thing that we already have done inside the code we also have a bunch more examples so if you have like for example you want to use a roboflow model you can also do that 
and we can also get all these different types of annotations. So let's just scroll through it. Here we can see we get these like crosshair, we can get heat map zones directly. We just need to specify that. Um, so we have a bunch of different annotation ways. So definitely go through this GitHub repository. They also have nice documentation going over all of it, all the different arguments and so on that you can specify for the box annotator and also the label annotator. We can detect and annotate, we can track objects, we can also filter objects. If you just go inside the API, for annotators, they have a bunch of different like types of annotations. So we can do bounding box, round box, box corner, color, circle, and if you if you want to do some more hardcore things, they also have like pixelate or blur. Let's say that you want to detect phases in an image, and then you just want to blur those out. You can do that directly with only a few lines of code. So this is pretty cool. That's why I'm using it, and you should definitely like test it out. Because again, we don't have to deal with extracting all the results, setting up all like the put text, um, rectangles, lines, and so on in OpenCV. Let's jump back to into it. Now we act like have everything. We have set it up with supervision. We're extracting the results. <clears throat> so let's now go ahead and take this video here with the bottle so we can see these bottles running in a production line. I'm just going to copy the relative path. And let's now go back again into our script. We just overwrite this one here change the path so it's correct. And now we should be good to go. We can go in and open up a new terminal and just run this program directly. So this is just brand new from Autolytics. If you have an earlier version of Autolytics, make sure that you actually go in and uninstall it first or basically just upgrade it with pip because that is required. If you're getting any errors, it is most likely because of that. So just go in and pip and uninstall it or just upgrade it directly with pip as well. I've already done that. So I can go in, hit Python, YOLO, world, Py. I can hit enter and it's going to run the program. In the first run, it's going to download the model weights. I've already been running this, so they are already in my trajectory or in my path. So here we can see the bottles running this conveyor belt. We get really nice detections. And here we can see that the label was act like zero because right now we only care about one class. So it's basically just going to be a bottle. We can always swap that out or we can specify the labels as well. And we can set the arguments for label annotator with supervision. And then it's basically just going to show bottles instead of a zero, but it doesn't really matter too much. And we're going to play around with a bunch of videos here, but let's just run it again. And I can, like see that it keeps track of all of these objects here. It doesn't even lose detections in any of the frames. It kind of like looks like we're running object tracking on top of this. So I was going to grab some other examples, some other videos in here. Maybe we can just try to not specify anything and just run it quickly again. There we go. It will open up in just a second. Let's see if it's capable of detecting the bottle. So yeah, even though we don't specify anything, it's just going to like set uh, set the label here to 39. It's most likely because it is the index in the Coco data set because Autolytics is using that as default in here. It's going to try to see if we can find another video. Um, so let's just scroll through some of them. There we go. Let's try to grab this video. We copy the relative path. We go back again. You guys can see how easy it is to run it on different videos. We can also go in and specify our um, webcam in just a second. There we go. Let's now run it. And now we should be able to run it on the fish. So let me just specify that. Fish, save, run. And then we're going to see the results in just a second. There we go. Now we can see that we again, we have label zero because we only have one class that we care about. Even the fish fishes here in the background, like this is pretty crazy results. And again, I'm running this uh, with the medium model. I'm running this on a 30, um, 3070 RTX graphic card from Nvidia. 12 milliseconds inference. So that's around 80 frames per second. So this is pretty crazy and even like higher compared to the benchmarks that they had inside the project page. Okay, let's try another video here. Let's just try one where we don't specify anything. Let's try to see if we can detect some cars. I'm just going to go through some of them here. Yeah, let's grab this one. Let's go back again. There we go. Let's not specify any classes up here at the top. Run it. And again, you can also like specify like whatever class that you actually like, want to detect and they're just prompted. We can see that all of the detections, like some of the cars are pretty small in the images, but it's still able to detect them. We even see like some traffic signs, but again, class two is, is uh, a car in the Coco data set. 
So this is pretty crazy. Again, it's only running with a few lines of code and we can set up these label annotators, bounding boxes and so on. Let's try the last one here where I'm basically just specifying the index to my webcam. Let's run that and pull up my webcam. So I'm just going to grab it. So we have the webcam over here. It's going to open that up in just a second. So now I've just opened up the webcam. I've just specified index to my web camera. So that's the one in this example. If you only have one camera attached to your computer, it's just going to be zero. But let's just pull this away. We can see that we're detecting me as a person. Let's turn it around and see if it's capable of detecting some of the other ones. So we have a phone. Let's see if we have keyboards. We have two keyboards. And we should also like have a monitor here. So that's also correct. So again, we get all these predictions around. Let's see if we can get this water bottle. We're going to detect that as well. So sometimes 39, 41, but we can go and fill the those detections with under sections over unions and so on. So this is pretty cool. We have a speaker, we have the mouse here. So it's basically detecting that as the same classes. So it's not perfect, but we can go in and prompt that. So let's maybe just go in um, and prompt it to a computer mouse. Let's see if it's actually like capable of doing that. Computer mouse. It's going to run it. And now I should actually like only detect the mouse here that I have in front of me. I have not tried this before, so let's see. Okay, here we go. We can see that now it is detecting this um, mouse. We get some false predictions over here. Could be because the com confidence scores are pretty low, but let's just try to move it around. We don't get any other ones over here. And if I move the mouse, even though we have the white keyboard in the background, it actually like keeps pretty good track of the object. So this is pretty cool. Test it out on yourself. Try to throw in different prompts. Again, it's really easy to use with Autolytics and also combine it with Supervision for these cool visualizations. We can go and do the blurring and so on. So thank you guys for watching this video here. I hope you have learned a ton. This is a very cool model. So you don't need any data set, no labeling anymore. Like that takes up a lot of time. We don't have to go in and train our models, export them, use them in our own application projects. Now we can just try this to start with try to see if we actually get good enough results before we set up the whole computer vision pipeline. So yeah, that's pretty cool. If you want to learn more about like object detection, object tracking, how we can train these models from scratch and also the theory behind that, I have courses on my website. So definitely go in and check those out. We also have research papers, like how we can read research papers, implement architectures from the research papers, have the architectures on one side, code them directly from scratch on the other side. So if you're interested in any of those, definitely go in and check them out on my website or else I'll see you next week, guys. Until then, happy learning.